Today, I have the guys from Mountainhead in studio, Ben and Kyle Hanna. Thanks a lot, guys. Mountainhead! <laughs> that was pre-planned on the, on the ride over or what? That, well, no, we, we, we forgot <laughs> to sound add tag. it. Yeah, it's just, just like, tag. you know okay, how the rappers cool, cool, add cool. their thing? You know? Yeah. You kind of have that. It, yeah. It, it, all those things that stick in your head, like Lil John. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right, that's a, not, not a bad way to approach it. Yeah, we, we went to a rap, we went to see Two, two Chains, like, last summer. And like every after every song, you be like two chains, and it's like that's you wake True. up and that's in your head. Yeah, it is. You like know the, the songs. You're like, oh, sure. I kind of remember them, but that sticks with you. I actually saw Lil John in uh, in concert in Quebec City, and I think the I've main reason too. anybody goes to see Lil John is because of the, you know the all the, the hubbub master. with the yeah, yeah with the uh, with the catchphrases. Absolutely, he actually smoked a bong on stage. Did he? It was great. <laughs> yeah, we're all like 16 years old, and we thought it was great. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't it an acrylic bong? <laughs> <laughs> <You're that close. laughs> yeah. I feel like little John would have a little acrylic bomb. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah, I don't know. I forget now. I was a little uh maybe uh, influenced myself that deep. Oh yeah, but, sure. Uh, I mean you go to little John, you got it. Fellas, our uh, our dads actually work together. They're in the uh, the corporate world. That's right. And that's and how we suits. got linked up. Yeah, the suits and uh yeah, yeah just kind of fascinating that we got to, uh, able to link up. Absolutely. And uh I want to know, you know, your father, your dad is uh, you know, in that corporate world and here you guys are doing the music thing. Mm-hmm. How did that kind of contrast happen and when did that become clear that maybe you guys weren't uh, going down that that business path? The business. Uh. Well, we all we both attempt. Well, I, I I got through the business path. Like I went through my four years in finance. Yeah, that's that's what I got. A finance degree. Finance degree. But like the last semester in school, I had, like took a music class for an elective because I needed something. Yeah. And I immediately knew that I was putting numbers from this side of the T to this side was not for me, and that I was in the wrong spot. So like one class, and I was like, I don't think I should be doing this for the rest of my life. Mm. So that was me. But Ben. I've been shredding for years, but you didn't make been, it through. You went, you tried the business school thing, and you're yeah. like, yeah. Well, I mean, Bang. I've been I've been shredding music for years. I started playing guitar True. when I was young, and uh, yeah, really started to excel at it. And then I became like the party trick, where uh, when Mark would have his corporate parties, give us some Johnny Cash. Everyone would come upstairs and I'd be like shredding the <laughs> crazy train, the, the crazy train solos yeah. or guitar solos from songs. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I I I was really into it, and then high school kind of took over my head. You know how that that game goes. And uh, I decided to do what I thought was expected of me, which was business school. And uh, I had this like eight track recorder in my dorm. And I just like found myself skipping pretty much every class and I'd just be making music on this thing. And uh, a little Call of Duty in there too, I'm sure. Yeah, Call of Duty <laughs> Modern Warfare 2 as well. <laughs> but uh, I didn't leave the dorm much, but uh, it, just, it just wasn't resonating with me. And I, I was in Fort McMurray. And uh, again, our father was having a party and all his corporate homies were over. And he just kind of like nonchalant. He was like, well, yeah, you had a good year. You're going back, right? And I was like, no. And it was kind of like the needle on the record. The whole party just like. Rrr. And I was like, I think I'm going to, you know, pursue the music thing. And it was bumpy for a sec. But I mean, ultimately, there's been a lot of support. There's been there's been bumps along the way. But uh, we've been working hard. And I mean, it's starting to show. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're starting to understand what we're up to. Yeah, you'd think maybe almost like a healthy skepticism from parents of like yeah, uh, course, not yeah. trying to be like, yeah, yeah, for sure, go be an actor or something <laughs> like that. Uh, yeah, but, you know, anything that you do, if you bring, you know, your full energy and, you know, something you have talent for. And like you said, this was something you're doing anyway. Like you're yeah. in the dorm room. This is just stuff you feel compelled to do. So yeah. and uh, that's where your talent is. So why not explore that path? And I'm sure, sure. that's when the parents get on board is when they see. No, OK, he's yeah. he's for real. This isn't just yeah, a, an, an avoidance dog, uh, path. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really cool, guys. Dog. Yeah, we weren't turning out results. I mean, I, I would understand if they told us to, yeah. you know, go start washing buses again. But we've been we've been going at it. We've been going at it. Really cool. So the project you guys have right now, Mountainhead is the name. You guys have a drummer as well. Uh, yep. Yes, Miss really Danny cool. Nash. Yep. Really cool. That what's it like having uh, What's it like having her on board? She's you know she all over the Toronto music. She's scene. a badass. Uh, Straight up. Yeah. She's uh, she makes us cooler for sure. She looks really <laughs> cool. She plays well. Yeah. She and, adds like uh, the rock and roll into things. Like we kind of we got like this like very like stiff kind of thing going on and, that, and then because we're playing just together with two guitars and then when the drums get in there and it's, everything starts rolling a bit we're like ah there we go that feels a lot better so that's what she adds she just like kicks her ass which is hilarious because she's a tiny little girl that's pretty wild because yeah. you guys do have bring the cool factor you got the gold teeth 
yeah. you know, the the hats, the beards, the whole look. And, yeah, to find somebody that can, you know, really compliment the, Absolutely, the whole man. vibe. That's yeah, very that's true, yeah. Pretty cool. Think about that, but yeah. Really cool, guys. Hey, is there any kind of, like, healthy competition between you guys? I'm wondering, like, what's the songwriting dynamic? And maybe, you know, we okay. talked before about the, cool. the McCartney and Lennon dynamic sure, of people sure. that are kind of, you know, bringing each other up to be their best. Do you I guys sense you. that between each other, between yeah, the brothers? Yeah, yeah, it yeah. can get intense in the studio, uh, especially, uh, I mean, there's been other projects with other bands where there was more people to diffuse the situation, but I found... Kyle and I working together, we have a very specific thing that we know we're looking for. And we it's not like a spoken thing. Like we just understand when we know we found that thing to yeah. chase. And then to get to that thing is where it can get heated and you're just kind of chasing the you gotta chase the idea in the song and not so much the have personality our heads, and shit. Have you our heads get yourself out of the way as much as possible. Mm-hmm. It's it, and then you can feel when things are going right. Like you're like, oh, this is this should be like this, and like we both know if something is on or off. Like just, I don't know, intuitively or whatever. Yeah, you got to find that right fit because you yeah. know you go in the studio, all anybody's trying to do is just capture some magic. You know, like what exactly. is that when you pull a good idea or something That's that just works? Thing. And yeah, like how do you also manage the personality dynamic in terms yeah. of yeah. just setting the stage to to make that happen, right? To get yeah. that great those great moments. Absolutely, we, we understand ourselves well enough that we don't punch each other in the face, but like it can get heated. <laughs> Sure, yeah. And Heated like, in a way that's very passive and just like, grrr, like, because we're, you know. Legal marijuana helps a lot to round the edges of like, roughness. It <laughs> really does, you, man. man. It really does. <laughs> like, so you're not like two at each other. It's like more like, oh, yeah, man, I hear that. You know, yeah. and like, it sounds stupid, but it actually works in a creative setting like that mm-hmm. and trying to get ideas through like the tunnel rather than blocking it up. Mm-hmm. Getting everything together for a publicist, so I wouldn't recommend the legal oh, God, marijuana. Yeah. You just sit there laughing at everything you're doing. And then you read it the next yeah. day. And you're or just spend four hours on Photoshop. Yeah. yeah. Anyhow, but yeah. It, it, and like the Lenny McCartney thing, I see that like, like how I look at it is like Paul is like too much like he's too happy with life. So like Lenny's got to be like, yo, life isn't all peaches, man. And like we're kind of like not as, as, as polarized as those two, I would say. So we can both understand that life is not all good or all bad it's like you got to walk the the mm. line in between the yin and yang symbol you know yeah. as much as possible yeah. ride the dragon yeah <laughs> but you guys talk about kind of being at it you know sometimes it gets intense but sure it seems like a pretty chill lifestyle you guys got i mean the look uh you're up in georgetown i think you guys <laughs> yeah. have like a, a big property up there or something like that yeah, it's or not, like the it's party not house big. or you yeah. know well uh, that's yeah, true. It's, <laughs> yeah it's been uh we have neighbors too close and they get pissed off yeah when we, when we brought the uh the drum kit into the main room in the main floor there's been some complaints next doors but yeah, yeah we've had the, we've been running a studio out of that spot for like the last seven years so that was big time for just honing our skills and for sure and that's ex- about like an hour outside of toronto right yeah. in yeah. terms of okay yeah. Yeah, up in georgetown yeah it's uh, not too far and uh yeah it's been great i mean we got to work with a lot of great musicians we got to play on a lot of great records and just like get better ourselves and then when it comes time to make our own stuff we can kind of just like unconsciously amalgamate everything we've done sure and it i know it's worked well we've made a lot of great contacts too and just met a lot of cool people who have kind of helped us along the way we're just you know look here look there don't do this do that and just kind of like uh speed up our evolution you know yeah yeah, I mean, such a big thing is having that peer group, you know, being in a place like uh, Toronto. How often are you guys able to be in Toronto? Because that's really where the majority of the Absolutely. artists and the networking and the collaboration Absolutely. potential can happen. So what's We're it like having that kind of the distance, in a way, from the big city it's, where the scene's at? I mean, it's just like the initial thing, like, ah. Oh, Quick God. 45 minutes. Yeah, you got to go. But, like, it, it, it's exactly what you're saying, man. It's the hub of, I would say, Canada. So um, it's Canada's scene. LA, and like we kind of like know like, the the cool places to be where the, everyone's kind of connecting because it is that like saying like it's not what you know it's who you know it's like people it's like we're like it's like the internet it's like we're all getting together and networking like these computers and then we can help each other out and understand the business side of things and understand each other and help each other out which is cool because like the artists tend to help like each other rather than you see that cutthroat in the corporate but it still is like that like in the artist thing but th- there's more the the boundaries are less rigid so people are more helping you you know yeah even and if it's not a good natured like oh yes. I want to help the artists around me exactly. it's still like you see artists that are doing things really well and then that again like that pressure you know that 
it's going to lift you up yeah. and, and inspire you to kind of get to that level. Okay. I talked to a guy, Ernesto Cervini. He's like a he's a jazz drummer. Cool. He said the biggest thing for his development was moving to New York City and just everywhere he turned, yeah. he was like, "Oh my god, I thought I was I had it going on and now like every random yeah. bar I walk into is like a world-class player." So, like that powerful thing of, you know, being in a place like Toronto with all those artists that can kind of yeah. yeah, just kind of keep you motivated, Very keep true, you uh, aware yeah, yeah, of yeah. what's out there and yeah. And keep going and getting better and being like, oh, I didn't know I could do that. You just, like, see some move on a guitar, like, even, like, a, a beat on a drum. You're like, oh, I, I dig that. Okay, I can use that. And it's, yeah, it's not always just uh, it's not always just what you think or the area you're in. Like, it, it, the sky's the limit on, like, talent or ability. Like, it, everywhere you go, you just get into a bigger circle and a bigger circle and a bigger circle. And you realize, okay, well, if, if you want to swim, you got to really learn how to swim. And you got to learn how to hold your breath because it's going to get deep. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's like you're never satisfied of being there. Like, ah, I finally made it. It's like, well, that, what does that even mean, you know? Yeah. Just keeps always a new something open, new. I guess. Yeah. yeah. The, as, uh, I guess it's kind of silly because of the band name, but it's like every every spot you hit on the mountain, you're going to look up and there's still going to be, you're never going to reach that peak. You're never going to reach the peak. You're just going to keep going and you keep climbing. And you just got to understand that that's life. Yeah, Sisyphus. Yeah. Sisyphus, thing, you, know? you know Sisyphus, that myth. Push that no. boulder to the top and it's going to roll yeah, back down. he's like down. tortured for eternity oh, sure. and then he has to like just push the boulder up the hill and then roll it down and he does that forever. It's like, this is like a metaphor for what, what we're doing. Yeah, doing. Well, yeah, we all need a uh, boulder to, to push. Whether, yeah, again, we were talking about before yeah. the mics went on, as kids, when you're playing sports, yeah. you have that thing to channel all your energy into, sure. your competitive spirit, exactly, and dude. that's your boulder. And then, you just know, to do it. If, if no that, other reason. Yeah, if you don't go the uh, the athletic route, when what's what's your next boulder, you yeah. know? And yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a great thing because yeah. you're improving. You just sense, like, it's got to be gratifying for you guys to be making cool projects and connecting and you just kind of feel this thing heading in a direction and yeah that's right that's for gotta, sure it's, it's cool too yeah. with the with the studio is like we got documented evidence of progression where you can look at stuff years and years and years ago where we first just started like you had one mic and we're just messing around and you're like okay that's it's funny to hear it now and then you see you know like the, the latest record you're like okay that's that's a clear evolution there's no there's no questions or if ands or buts it's just like it's documented in time, which is cool. It's cool to be able to, you know, remember and retrace mm-hmm. where the uh, the foundations were and how the the building started to build. So now, what's the ethic of like constantly improving? Because like, like you see the improvement, and now in the present moment, is there is there like a pretty concerted effort to like just taking this? Oh, never stop! Know, it's yeah. like with yeah. this newest project, it's like uh, the the metaphor I've been using is like we uncovered like the toe of a fossil, and it's going to be. It's massive dinosaur, but it's like you just gotta slowly use the those little paintbrushes the paleontologists <laughs> use, and just uncover it, and then spend your life uncovering that fossil. Yeah, and just so you guys feel like you found something, eh? like, for sure. Yeah. Just like so, we f- we found the toe, you know, just the toe, <laughs> and it's a uh, it's a facility to to find the rest of the creature, you know. What was that breakthrough of like finding, you know, first discovering, planting? Just deciding to chip away some plot of land and go. Oh wow, there's there's a looks like there's a <sighs> fossil here. <laughs> it, it's funny. Like we were in other other bands, and uh, you know we had some some ideas about where things were going to go. You know we're doing some psychedelic soul stuff and some southern rock stuff. And we uh, we had like we released a record a couple of years ago, and like maybe a week before the record release, like the band fell apart just from turmoil over the years. And we had a whole tour booked, so we kind of just on the seat of our pants we had to hire another drummer we did the whole tour but we went to like our cottage a week before the tour scrapped all the the previous music that we were going to tour and that we had like advertised to the promoters and everything we wrote a bunch of songs that were okay but we knew that like you know everyone in the band was a pretty solid player so we could just kind of pull it off if we needed to and we toured uh, like basically all of Canada and we recorded all the shows and we were pretty stoked about some stuff and uh Brought it to Darcy Yates, who produced us, and yeah, he just basically there. There was like, so we had hours of our, our stuff recorded, and there was like this little snippet, five seconds, this like little riff, and like Ben and I doing this like harmony thing together, and he's like, "There, that's where you should focus. Forget about the rest." And we're rattled. We're like, "I thought we had a whole cool songs here." And he's like, "No, they're not cool." And we're, you know, you get your ass kicked a bit, and it's like, it's good. You're like, "Oh, uh, what we thought was going on ain't going on." Okay. So we just kind of went from the drawing board from this tiny little snippet. And then we had like this one riff from we played at the end of the show one time. And we were like, what's that? 
and then just like put this together and this whole other thing came out of it just like focusing on this very like grain of sand turned into like a little pile of dirt you're like oh what the hell is that about so it, to chase that is cool because like it's like happening organically or something like that man you're like building yourself a little like theme park in front of your head that was never there before you're like oh cool you can just pull something from nothing that's pretty cool yeah you know, that's exciting cool. yeah and you guys have some really cool tunes i've heard you know previewing these new mountain head songs Thanks, that are dude. coming out i'd love to talk more about them just right now after the break i have ben and kyle hannah here from mountain head in studio we'll be right back Fellas, you're talking about Jabber Fire Roll. Festival, and we're back. We're playing the Fire Festival. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look out for us. We got a lot of cool stuff going on. We just got booked for the Fire Festival. <laughs> uh, we're getting paid true. later. Yeah, they're, they're paying us on the Not, back end. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> cheese sandwich. Um. All right. All right. We are back on the Chip Marble Podcast, brought to you by Lynx Magazine. I'm here with Kyle and Ben from Mountainhead, guys. Hey, hey, what's happening? You have a lot of cool, uh, you guys have music coming out. You have the release date April 26th for the first yeah. single. Uh, tell me about that. And uh, I understand maybe that the single release is kind of the format you guys are going for, like one one jam at a time type of deal. Yeah, that's the, I guess that's what the new wave is these days, man. Like uh, the album is like fading away. Futuristic. Yeah. I was listening to, <laughs> talking about little Uzi Vert. I don't know if you know him. Sure. Someone was saying, uh, talking to a record exec, I think it was Joe Budden, and he said, when's Lil Uzi coming out with his album? He's like, Lil Uzi does 50 million streams a week. He doesn't need an album. It's like, that's what kind of industry we're in now. It's yeah. like, the the way you deliver the information now is a, is a different way. Like, the streaming and people, the, the, the attention spans, D and I were talking about that too, is like, are shorter and shorter, so... We're looking like we're doing the single thing until further notice, I guess. Yeah, we kind of just want to keep that stream going relentlessly. Um, we're always writing, even in between, just like you know, releasing stuff, and figuring it out. It's like the best part. We're right? always, yeah, always writing and chasing things. But uh, yeah, first single's coming out April twenty sixth. It's called "We Stole Your Head," and indeed, that is what will happen when you hear the song. But we'll give it back to you. Yeah, we like always we give it back. Song, <laughs> I don't worry about just it. Take it for a little while. Yeah, yeah. we're a friendly band. It's just give for it a scrubbing inside for <laughs> four <laughs> minutes. The song's four minutes. We're gonna you can lend you can lend yeah. your head for four minutes. Yeah. yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we we had the idea to to release a record, and we kind of produced you know seven tracks to make it a record, and it is quite cohesive. But just as we started talking to more people and kind of gathering our own ideas, we kind of just wanted to just keep shooting them out as singles and then kind of tie ourselves down to the goal of a single or two a month indefinitely because I mean if if we had to pursue that for life that's that's a noble task for me at least mm. um, and to just kind of keep giving people things to to digest and perhaps you know in 20 years or 30 years we'll have a massive album you know hundreds of songs <laughs> try to get through the whole thing if you can you know yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, really cool, guys. And, you know, that is an interesting strategy, and it, it kind of makes sense. Like, we're in that day and age where, yeah, yeah, like, streaming might be kind of the way to approach it. And you guys seem to be managing the whole aspect of the promotion. You have the uh, the cool logo as well. Uh, I'm a big fan of that. I'm wondering, like, where, where did that come from? The uh, Mountainhead logo I'm seeing. Where did it come from, Ben? We did, we had this uh, uh, character that we we saw on the Internet one day. Saw this like this guy's art on like Reddit, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I go on the, I play the the guitar and I uh, draw the picture." And I was like, "Oh, cool!" This and I looked at the That's art. That's not and how like, it went at all. No, I didn't. <laughs> but uh, uh, the art was like cool enough. Like as soon as you looked at it, I was like, "There's there's just something there, right?" And I was yeah. like, "Benji, he's he gets tattoos all the time." So I was like, "Check this out." And then we went and visited him and connected with him. And long story short, he ended up mixing the record. He's just like a, I don't know, he's just, he can the look David at you Cote. and go, I know where you want the tattoo and what you want. Like, he's like kind of like that. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. He, he draws it and you look at it and you go, yeah, that's sick. How? You don't what even you ask him me? how he knew, right? Yeah. You're like, okay, I'll just accept this as 
sure. That mm-hmm. is uh, Mr. David Peyote, a.k.a. Yeah. the David Cote. Yeah. World-famous tattoo artist. But, uh, yeah, we really clicked when we met him, like, years ago. Uh, Kyle pointed out his art, and we were going to Montreal, so I uh, hit him up, and him and I kind of bonded over um, sitar. I've been learning, mm-hmm. like, Indian classical music for the last six years. And uh, he had a sitar, and he was like, hey, dude, like, I, I don't know how to string it, so... I brought some materials to fix up his sitar. He tattooed me, and then we kind of formed a friendship. We went out in Montreal, went to all these crazy bars that we probably would have never heard of or seen. Bar with the skate park at in it. Can you imagine yeah, anything a half, more dangerous? A half pipe, <laughs> five dollar <laughs> pictures of Pabst, and there's a half pipe in yeah. the bar. Yeah, and no like release form, no, no waiver. No. They don't care. Yeah, no, just no. have fun. It's this is Quebec, man. Yeah, just you re- you release yourself when you walk <laughs> into that. <laughs> if you place. crash, you just gotta jump over the guy that's dying in the bottom of the bowl. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we sent him early early concepts of uh, our outfits here, and he just kind of came up with that that logo. And like, I really want to make that logo an emoji. I like it a lot. And um, yeah, yeah. As Kyle said, he mixed the record, which was kind of funny. Like, we had other people in mind, and like, kind of heavy hit hitter mixers in mind, and we'd already like talked to a lot of them and had the project rolling. And uh, David was just kind of hitting us up throughout the project. You know, we were, we always share music back and forth because he makes music as well. Alien Emoji, check that out. And uh, anything else he produces. And I sent him some music and he kept being like, yo, send me the audio files. And us being, you know, we're, we're a little bit, you know, oh, we can be arrogant at times. We're just like, what is he going to know about mixing? You know, he's a, a brilliant tattoo artist. So, like, how much has he got in the rocket sauce bottle? And he sent, he, us back, he sent us back a rough mix and we were just like, what is this? Like it was amazing. We're just like he Stuff just hit. He took it, yeah, yeah, took it to yeah, yeah. took it to places. And but in the same way that he analyzes someone and can yes, kind of perceive yeah. like what would be the tattoo for them and the design and where. Exactly. Same thing with the music. Like what yeah. maybe these two brothers would would want out of the so sound. Weird, for so sure. weird. Like the artist, it doesn't matter the medium, right? If, if these guys are like a real artist, it doesn't matter what medium he's using. He's still going to get like a sensitivity something across. Yeah, yeah. something and, like uh, that. Man. Yeah. That's there was weird. like little trinkets in the music that we kind of alluded to to production ideas that you know we had we had a lot of ideas going into it and he he could pick those up and just run with it and then take them even to further areas and you're like all right and it was funny just so you know our producer Darcy was uh you know he really was into the project and and wanted to see it all the way through and kind of protect where it was going and we all had a little bit of skepticism at first, but, you know, he kept hitting us with these tunes and it just blew the door open. And we were like, okay, like, say no more. Here's all the music. And then uh, he did an amazing job and we flew to Montreal to finish the record with him, hung out with him for a couple of days in the studio. And Big Keats. Yeah. Shout out to Big Keats. Shout out to Big Keats. Nage as well. Yeah. Uh, he has a third cat, but uh, she She's or he shy. did not come out to see us. Yeah. But that's what we did. We hang out with cats and mix for <laughs> hours <laughs> and drank beer. But again, you guys have this like dynamic partnership, and you're finding other people that just fit into yeah. this dynamic, and uh, it's really cool, yeah. And mostly in the in the past, we've done it ourselves, and like it's cool to uh, like just like hand responsibility over to people, and then see them like just go and kick ass with it, and like just trusting them, being like, yeah, you know what, go and do all this, and it comes back, and you're like, wow, this is amazing, and we've been doing that a lot for this project, like the pictures, the uh, yeah, logo, shout out Paul Wright, yeah. Andy Ragan, those yeah, guys video, absolutely slayed it. Darcy Yates, we had a producer, so he could tell us what was dog shish and what wasn't, you know. Yeah. So yeah, it was really handy to have other people, but also like keeping the vision, like okay, let's like I see what everybody's saying, but we're still gonna go this way sometimes, right? Yeah. And do you have a bigger vision of where you want the project to go? I know you had the the dinosaur fossil analogy, which is kind of just uncover it as you go, right? But do you guys maybe have a clear sort of formulated thing of where you want this to We're go? We're looking to take the world's head, you know? Yeah, we yeah. want the whole thing. Wasn't the wasn't the ultimate goal of Fortnite skin? So that Yeah, like we're looking to get <laughs> this look. That's in the want to reach the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Fortnite yeah. is the platform. We'll come up to with do the dance. Yeah, we can come yeah, up yeah. with a dance. <laughs> No, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We just like, I mean, we really love playing music and uh, to keep producing music and playing music and performing music is really what we're after. And yeah. we're just going to keep doing that and keep showing up because yeah. uh, there's like, I mean, anybody that listens to music and like has a good time or like, you know, music gets you through whatever or like you're partying to it. It's like everyone has a little bit of debt to the musicians that made it. You're like, ah, and it's like almost like repaying that. Like in my my sense of things, it's like music got me through so much in my life, just like listening, just like the soundtrack of your life. That's like, 
well, now it's my turn to like just go in the cycle and do it, you know? Yeah. And hopefully that passes on you just like inspire the next generation to keep it going man that's all yeah I'm into podcasting for the same reason there was like that dark time in my life in university where you know I stopped doing sports and I didn't have like anything in my life filling that void Yeah, and like listening to podcasts talk format like that was everything you know and now it's like you take that responsibility to make it it's like I'm not just a fan anymore I think that maybe I could organize my energy and then yeah yeah it's it's like focusing the sunbeam with a magnifying glass you know we all have this ability and most people unfortunately are like either too scared too nervous or you know just aren't ready to fully express themselves where you know you gotta you gotta yeah not don't be scared ever Yeah, it's bigger than the, than the than the than yourself, right? Like it's like that's the thing is you got to put something above it so you don't like get too down on yourself anymore. You're like, oh, I'm looking. I keep looking up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. climb the mountain. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, and yeah, it's not an easy path. You know, you no, pick, you start going yeah. on stage and performming, and you you put yourself out there, yeah, right? Shite in your pants. You're <laughs> like, oh, why am I doing this? Like all that comes, right? Oh, like, yeah. you're like the yeah, whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. The self doubt circle comes, and you just got to deal with it. And you have to stink. Like the whole thing of you yes. know, doing this new thing and embarking yes. on this crazy journey is the beginning. Yeah. You're totally unequipped, but mm-hmm. you have to just put yourself in those positions. And you definitely have yeah, to shit the bed. I mean, man. Yeah. <laughs> you have to like that, that. You have to get through that. You have to almost like embarrass yourself to death. And then, yeah. then you're not afraid yeah. anymore. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Kevin McAllister said in Home Alone, I'm not afraid anymore. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm... <laughs> oh, my God. Very true. <laughs> you're learning this lesson way longer ago, yeah. And, uh, you know, we're talking about performing live, and I think you guys do have a show. Uh, uh, there is a secret show, May 10th, at uh, Coop de Tet, who uh, okay. are the fine gentlemen who made these hats on our heads. Shout out to Jay and Ryan. Yeah. Also, shout out to Ben via piano who made our sick jackets and our jeans. Oh, also custom. in that shop, Bes- yeah, bespoke. So uh, it's going to be password only. It's only going to be promoted about four days out. It's uh, during CMW, and I think I don't know what the cap is, but it's like a you know we're doing a real low key like underground speakeasy. Like you need a password to get in. Man, and, uh, that's the password. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> see, that's the password. Let's take him up. <laughs> I got a rod. <laughs> that's what. I yeah. got a rod. <laughs> But no, it'll be super cool okay, and super cool, fun. Cool, cool. Right down. Yeah, uh, Matt and D, if you guys want to come to, if you're around. Yeah. Hell yeah. Around too. Yeah, that's it, man. Yeah. Just don't tell anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> it won't leave this room. That's yeah. the whole point of podcasting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, in terms of, you know, what is the live performance like for you guys? I'm sure you've been doing it a while. You've got probably come a long way in terms of that whole, you know, performing in that context. And what's that like for you guys and where are you at now with getting up there and connecting with people? Okay. Oh, okay. That's a good one. So basically, like, I don't know. Before in the band, there was five of us, so there was a lot more noise, a lot more yelling, and it was a lot more chaotic. So basically... Also easier to rely on other people, though. Yeah, that's also true. So someone else, you know, you could just, like, drown in the noise. But, like, the new stuff we're doing now is much more calculated and much more, like... Rhythmic. Rhythmic, and everything has got its place. And it's, like, we're just more organized and less chaotic this time around. And like we we have we've been uh, touring with like Bahamas and Metric and Death Cab and like seeing how all those big operations work just by watching just by looking and seeing how day to day how this works and like getting a behind the scenes view of that was pretty important just for again like motivating you up the mountain you know also seeing where you got to get at to play because yeah all how good you have shred. to yeah and how organized you have to be and how the whole team has to be a unit and like there's so much behind the scenes that most people aren't seeing about it like it's like like you're saying our fathers like the corporate structure is everywhere because that's the only way to organize crazy monkeys basically which is us is like the the human race it's like to, to, to get everybody on the same page takes a lot of discipline a lot of stress and a lot of work and like you're never going to get away from that yeah. Even as an artist where you want to be like, oh, dude, it's just about... The whimsy of the artist the is the quality <laughs> of the artist. <laughs> there ain't no music if you ain't making money. It's just yeah. the fact around this part of the world, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you got to organize the what you're doing here, you know, especially in like a team atmosphere. Yeah. 
And uh, yeah, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do. And as no. it grows bigger and bigger, you know, you talk about having a band with three people, but going on tour, now you have to get so many more people in sync. And yes. it's uh, a bit of a skill set. You guys feel like maybe you picked a, a bit of that up from your old man, the ability to maybe oh, manage. Oh, sure. oh, <laughs> he's, damn, he's, man. he's, uh, he's in part we're of a lot of managed to this day. We go, yeah. We're going to go home and we're going to get managed somewhere, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's taught us a lot. He's an intense man. Yeah. And, uh, but his heart is huge and he's great with people and uh, those skills he's imparted on us has been invaluable yeah for sure but uh, yeah the, the live performance for this project was interesting because it's not like a lot of the songs aren't super traditional in terms of like chords and you know laying back like a lot of the stuff we play on the guitars or the bass is like a counter rhythm to what we sing so it's kind of like you know patting your head and rubbing your belly like you know when we we wrote the record and it got you know, it was done, and we were all stoked about it. And then we we're like, "Uh oh, can we even play this?" Like, it took a long time to get it all around because it wasn't just your standard rock and roll oh, yeah. stuff that you could just lay over. But it came together, and I mean, it's a very filled out record and produced. But I think we've come up with something really cool as a three piece rock and roll band to represent it. And uh, and I don't know, I've had I've had a lot of fun, and I know like everyone involved had a lot of fun just getting it going and having a laugh about it and but also dialing it in and being strict where we need to be strict and being loose where we need to be loose to just you know do the songs justice mm. hey one of those songs that you guys do justice gaslight i'm a huge fan that's by far i don't know something about it <laughs> appreciate that and man. <laughs> come on baby yeah, yeah. uh yeah i'm digging it there's something about it uh, can you tell me anything about that song maybe something about the the creative process how that kind of uh, got beamed into your the, the mountain how did heads it started it started the, the, out the, as a yeah, bridge yeah right? the funny thing is like because we song, we man. you know there's there's a pretty there's a there's a bit of a formula to what we're doing and i i don't know if you notice but like our bridge is aren't really like guitar solos or anything specific soloing, but they're kind of like these arrangements, kind of like, you know, like orchestrated arrangements around different themes and layers of themes. And we we were writing some song, I don't think it made the record, and we got to the the bridge of it, where it's like where we have a lot of fun because we'll just, you know, make up these cool instrumentations. And we got into Gaslight and you know, halfway through the recording, we're like, "Hold on, this can't be a bridge. Like, this is a this is a song. This is a full on song, man. This is a hit, man. <laughs> this is an absolute <laughs> smash, absolute smasher." <laughs> but uh, that's really what happened. Is I mean, we were recording it. One of our buddies came over, and he was like, "What is this?" And we're like, "It was a bridge." And then we just like deleted that and started the song, and uh, it all kind of just came out. You know, just chase chase that that idea and you know the the vocal melody and the chorus it all just kind of wrote itself you know you just got to be there to to guide it into reality really mm. i find i find the less we're involved in in it the better the results and then the more involved we are in it it's just kind of like uh, you can tell like oh ben ben put his idea there or it's kyle just, put his idea there smell. Yeah, eat. it's this. You can smell it <laughs> <laughs> instead of uh, <laughs> instead of it just like you know it, I, it's hard to explain because it's this like illusory thing but. The, the more you lay off, usually the clearer the channel, and then it's going to come, like, you know, let let the song write itself, really. Cool, but yeah. Gaslight, hey? Gaslight. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it's one of those things playing on, like, a, a literal gaslight, like, on your car. Or, like, gaslighting somebody where, like... You manipulate their reality. Where you keep telling them, like, no, you're on, like, no, there's no Cheetos in this room, Matt. There's nothing. What do you mean? Oh, I guess not. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? Like, so those, like, two meanings come together where this you get, like, the literal lateral. and the non-literal mm. and stuff. Yeah, really cool. The yeah. double entendre. There you go. <laughs> That's what it's all about. It all comes back to, oui. you know, a little bit of wordplay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, yo, guys, really cool uh, meeting you today. You guys come through and you hey, performance nice and come upstairs. Guys. Thank Appreciate you very you. much for having us in, dude. Yeah, well, guys, uh, all the best and uh, looking forward to the single coming out on April 26th. And, we uh, stole your head, baby. Yeah. Hey, we'll give it back, though. Don't be too scared. Yeah. Mountain head. All right, Mountain guys. Head. Thanks yes, a lot, sir. yo. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Thank you.